Hello, my name is Jose Gonzalez, and today I will be training you on how you can become the best trainer possible as you expand your knowledge of why it is very important not only for customers and companies but also for yourself to know how to provide individuals with a great and the best customer service possible. And I am really sure that after we are done with this training today, you will see a huge difference in your skills and how much there is for us to improve as employees who work and depend on others. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the course description uh, in which uh, we're going to focus on, on give, giving a, a review of what the training uh, is going to consist of. So basically customer service is known to be essential to any organization because it is often the only contact a customer has with a company. It has been investigated that when trust is built and there is a connection, um, it is considered to matter more than price. Therefore, it induces problems and always appeals to the customers you're working with. This training course examines uh, the fundamental concepts and techniques for providing a great customer service, as you will expand your skills and knowledge in this field. An effective employee must understand and know how to communicate effectively with other individuals, as they are expected to create a positive um, impression at all times. Therefore, it will help uh, you all uh, to develop skills to handle customer complaints and maintain good relationships with those you do business with. This presentation will focus on the importance of developing and maintaining customer service standards, learn the different types of customers you'll be facing, uh, and how to plan the best customer service uh, possible. Uh, and also, the trainees will develop a specific uh, perspective on the customer service process. We will also explore ways to reflect on the values, the skills, and experience needed not only uh, to satisfy customers but to be successful at what you will do. This will also increment the possibilities for the institution you work uh, for to grow and consider you for a better position. We will give special consideration to the challenges of serving others, especially when dealing with such a rich and diverse population. We begin this course with the assumption that there are no clear rules or guidelines for being a good customer service representative. Rather, the task is to develop uh, reflective and critical skills uh, for training about creative solutions uh, when needed and the possibility to expand your knowledge of how customers feel when working with you. Um, so now let's talk um, a little bit um, about what you will be seeing at the end of this presentation, which is basically um, all of you will be expected to be able to communicate effectively with customers, create a positive impression, develop and maintain customer service standards, and earn different types of customers. You will also have the opportunity to plan good customer service, know the importance of first impression and how to deal with difficult individuals and different types of customers. Additionally, it will empower you with the right knowledge and tools that will help you take decisions and resolve customer complaints and issues you may face. Um, now let's uh, talk a little bit of our learning objectives, which are our main goals um, with this um, training. So basically, our main goal is to train you on how to communicate effectively with customers, how to create a positive and the best impression possible, how to develop and maintain customer service standards, and finally, learn different types of customers and how to deal with them, which is one of the most important uh, part of um, this um, training. Now we're gonna uh, focus on, on the course training, which basically uh, will be uh, expanding your knowledge on definition on customers and customer service, importance of good customer service, communicating and how you can communicate effectively, how you can and are expected uh, to react, uh, your attitude, also expected skills for a successful customer service, also customers' expectations, and how to react to um, several issues you may face with um, clients. 
importance of greeting customers and establishing a great relationship. Also organizational assessments, uh, what they consist of. Uh, also positive Im image uh, representation and manner. Also what affects quality of service. Additionally, what to avoid and what affects quality of service. Uh, also the four P's, uh, we'll be sharing about the four P's. Uh, you probably don't know, but today we're gonna learn what they are. And also the difficult and different types of customers uh, you'll be dealing, you're probably gonna be dealing with. Now let's talk a little bit about the customer service goals, okay? Um, so bridging the gap. So we actually got this um, this chart from the course training that was um, just published in 2017 this year, and this slide we can see examples of of um, all we can, we will be covering today, uh, which includes time management, decision making, fun techniques, also internal customer service, creativity, um, problem solving, and stress management, teamwork, which is also very important, attitude, communication, and empathy. Um, um, on your professional and personal lives. Customers are considered individuals who need and depend on others and their assistance. They should never be seen as an interruption to your job as they should be seen as the reason you actually have a job. Okay. Um, it is also good to know that there are external and internal customers. So what are external and internal? So basically those who are considered external are those individuals who phone, you know, who are on the phone, uh, those who walk in or people who write, those you probably don't see, but are in a constant communication with. Uh, sometimes um, internal customers may belong to a different company, but actually you do business with. So not necessarily will have to be customers that they come uh, to your company, but they may also be part of a different company and they come to you and, and you may do business with. Uh, and those consider internal or people uh, from within your organization, people from other organizations, media, students, those who are part of it. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about where is customer service found. I would say that customer service, it's everywhere, you know, everywhere you go, you always have to work with people. I know that technology is advancing and technology is getting more and more sophisticated and we don't deal with people as much as we used to do 30, 40, 50 years ago, but customer service is everywhere. You know, there is, if you're an employee, you work for any company, you still need to work with people. It doesn't matter where you work at, okay? You will always have to deal with, uh, actually treat people. Places where you can see it are call centers, healthcare, institutions, legal fields, uh, gastronomy like restaurants, etc., uh, retails like malls, stores, uh, even if you work on the streets, if you work in, in corporations, you will still uh, need to do customer service and, and work uh, with people. Uh, so why is customer service important? Customer service is essential for any reasons, okay, for many of them. But it is important to know that customers pay our salary and make our jobs possible, as they are who literally help us bring the beans to our table. Okay, so always keep in mind that as that customers will always need you to help them, but you will need uh, customers more than what they need you. So keep that in mind. When there is a direct customer in interaction, it drives perception of company. Good customer service will cause for customers to be satisfied, and poor service means less likely to work with you and the company uh, in the future. It has been stated, okay, by... Uh, Bush and Ann in 2011 that uh, you need to delight customers. Satisfying them will not be enough. They have to be um, uh, well treated because they do have high, high expectations. Remember that what they have in their minds is that they're actually paying for um, their service. So they actually feel like they're entitled, okay? And always make them feel in that way. Now we're going to focus on, on customer service, uh, we should be considered important at all times. Okay, It involves primacy, uh, which is the first contact that leaves a powerful impression, which could be visual, uh, in front offices, uh, if you are greeting people, uh, and you're actually doing it through um, verbal, 
communication, also general tone of conversation as well, and uh, recency, which is the last contact that leaves a last impression. Okay, the results will be, uh, for example, to see if the customer gave what they expected, what uh, was the last interaction like, uh, do you think the customer left happy? Do you think the customer is satisfied after you have actually worked with them? That's very, very important to keep in mind, okay, that you always want for customers to leave your company happy, as you never know if they will come back again and depend um, on you. Now we're going to uh, focus on, on the best attitudes, okay, that are needed. So the best attitudes or needed to maintain and keep those you hope satisfied and happy with the service being provided. Some of the most essential attitudes are to reflect how much you enjoy what you do as you feel humble to help others, those people who need you. Therefore, handling and treating people well with the best attitude possible will always make it easier and uh, more sat um, satisfactory for the two of you. Always try to reflect how much you care for them your customers and avoid to be selective okay sometimes we may select customers depending on how they look uh, if we like them or not um, sometimes uh, they may feel you know that we're selecting other customers over them because of their appearance or maybe uh, culturally um, which means that you should treat all people equally and give the same service to all of them regardless of the way they look or act additionally you should be patient with people with special needs or those you consider that need more attention. Always be understanding and make every single person you deal with feel like they are your priority at the moment they need you. Now let's talk a little bit uh, more about uh, the best skills for um, customer service. So there's a tremendous essentiality in training associates to understand that Possessing several customer service skills is important for the company for customer satisfaction and the success um, of the company. As employees, you are all expected to know about your company. You need to know what your company uh, do. Okay, you need to do um, what your company consists of. You need to know your products. You need to know your policies, your regulations. You need to be proud of it. Okay. You're expected to know everything about the company you work for. You don't want. You will never want to portray or want to reflect that you don't know uh, what you guys do. Okay, um, you are supposed to know the culture and the norms, etc. You should also be open to learn the technical parts of the job. Communicate um, effectively. Be consistent and organized. Therefore, knowing your position and being uh, a team player will be of great help. Be willing to go the extra mile, not only for customers, but for those who are internals will, will always make a huge difference, okay? So you got to be a team player. You got to work with people. You got to like it. If you don't like working with people, remember that there are always options, okay, to, to be trained. And of course, uh, if you ever feel like you're in the wrong field, it's always a good idea to reconsider, okay? But it's these are skills that you can expand and you can improve. Always keep in mind. Okay, so now referring to customers and knowing their needs even before they ask, okay? So when things go wrong, okay, as the person in charge of the situation, you should be alert and aware of what they're looking for. You want to make sure that they know what they want and they know, and you know what specifically they need. It is true that it is hard to know what they want or need, uh, so make it simple for them, okay? Reflect that you know your job and give them your options. If you're not sure of what they're looking for, don't send them to associates, you know, like from associate to associate. Don't send them to a co-worker, you know. Go and look for the right person who possesses the, the knowledge to help the person in need. So don't don't expect that, you know, you're going to be sending them uh, to other people. No, you go with them and make sure that they are well treated and they, rece uh, they receive the help that, they're, that they need. Um, when things seem to go wrong, okay, um, customers always try uh, to make it harder for you. So try your best to make things right because a mad customer could cause huge conflicts and, and, and lost. Make it simple for customers to, to complain, okay? 
It's actually simple. Uh, keep in mind that only 4% actually do. Always be humble and know how to apologize. It's okay to do it, okay? Don't be prideful. Don't be afraid of it. If you think that you made a mistake, even if you don't think that you made a mistake, always try to make the customers feel like they uh, that you really care about them and you are really sorry about it. They usually expect for you to agree with them. It's easy um, and customers really appreciate it, okay? You'd rather um, have customers really happy. Uh, these individuals may not always be right, but customers, okay, clients must always win. You want customers to win and feel like they really won. Even if the customer you're working with is having a bad day, go out of your way to make them feel comfortable and better about it. It can actually turn out to be a great thing, okay, because you're actually helping them to feel better about everything that they're going through at the moment, which you don't even know, but you don't care about that. So you're actually making feel better about the situation. Uh, always deal with problems immediately and let customers know what you have done. Okay, always follow up and always try to value complaints and see them as uh, different opportunities to, to improve your skills and to grow. Uh, you don't know, you know, uh, it's good to know that you always learn from people, even if you don't expect it. Uh, now think about of you as a customer needing assistance for an employee. What are the things you're expected from them? How would you like to be treated? That's probably the way you should consider uh, and start treating those who depend on your on your help. There's a really big impact neg uh, negatively or positively, depending on the service you provide, which could, which could be perceived as a bad uh, or good. You know your job and your role, but a great customer service, go service goes beyond that. It is taking the extra step to help without being asked or having the best attitude, skills, or willingness possible. Associates are expected to reflect how much they love and enjoy what they do. Okay, so communication is very important. Okay, and they can make a really huge difference. Now, uh, I'm, I'm talking about communication, and communication is essential. Okay, in any relationship, especially between employees and customers. Communication involves the sender, who is the person asking um, the question, and the receiver. We can see it um, here on this diagram. Um, um, also, uh, the sender involves um, the person who is asking the question and the receiver, once again, who is the one who is supposed to help. Okay, you're, so, you're the one who is supposed to help. Uh, the message should be uh, smooth. Uh, they should be smoothly delivered and never be made as comp seem as complicated. Also, great communication skills involve listening to others efficiently and asserting or expressing correctly. As the person who is supposed to know how to handle any customer service situation, you should try to avoid for miscommunication to occur. And for customers to feel misunderstood, try not to ask the same questions over and over again, which can create a frustration on both sides, and this should also be avoided. When you involve other individuals into the problem, you're making it a bigger problem, and this makes you look like you're uh, incompetent and don't know your job. Always express how much you know what they want and need, and if not, try to tell them to be a little bit more specific, because it is your goal to help them find what they're looking for. Also, when we uh, talk about frustration, facial expressions could um, be very influential in the communication process, and sometimes faces can and can say things that are not meant to be said. Uh, so try to be enthusiastic as you, as you can, as enthusiastic as you can, and show it, okay? Don't just say it, also show it. Uh, knowing the communication process and step-by-step step, um, can help you organize uh, the way you communicate more efficiently. It is important to understand that actually 40% of, uh, of communication involves what you hear. For example, tone of voice, vocal, clarity, and verbal expression. Therefore, 50% of the message involves what you see or feel. We can see on this slide, which is composed uh, by facial expression, dress, and grooming, picture body language, eye contact, touch, and gesture. Then the last 10% is composed by words and what you say. Sometimes keep in mind that it's not what you say, but how you say things. So watch out uh, your verbal uh, communication, okay? Very 
important. Uh, now, um, how, um, what's a good, what's good about greeting behavior and how it is essential in any corporation. Its main goal is to create and maintain a welcoming environment to make customers feel comfortable and appreciated. The best way to, uh, to achieve it will be to be attentive and knowledgeable individuals as soon as they appear, even if you're too busy to help them. Keep in mind that you're the priority. Reflect a smile on your face, a very sincere one that reflects how happy you are to assist them. Don't say how much you enjoy helping them in, uh, if they're in front of you without reflecting it. Always pay attention to facial expressions and try to establish eye contact. Introduce yourself and always tell them your name. Okay, don't be afraid. Go ahead and tell them your name. Introduce yourself as you ask them how uh, you can assist them or how, your day, how their day is going and how you can make things right. Um, always remember that customers deserve and expect to have full attention and deserve for you to be polite and courteous, okay? Uh, your role plays a big impact on customers' decisions and satisfaction, so that's why maintaining a great connection can make a big impact as well. You should start uh, from practicing how great, how uh, to greet others and seeing how uh, how a great how great it feels uh, so you can practice in front of a mirror and greet yourself and see how you look or your facial expressions you know connected to your words if they're not how you can improve that uh, do you look happy assisting other people so that's a good way to actually go ahead and and try to improve okay and your greeting skills always try your best to make um, customers feel comfortable important and valued Always try to connect with them so they feel related and find things in common, which can make them feel more comfortable and understood. You want to relate with them. You, wanna, you want for them to feel like there is a connection. You don't want for them to hate you okay, or to leave um, your company saying that you were horrible, that you didn't uh, help them in any way, or that you didn't make them feel good. No. You want to establish a great relationship. Uh, now we focus on on uh, how to turn no into yes. Okay, it is important for customers to know that you are willing to know how you can help them. Always make sure that you know and understand that people want what people want and need. Furthermore, if you can help, what you should do uh, and what proceeds you should know already. Okay. Offer alternatives, if possible, and know how to handle it when they have to wait for you. If you make them wait because you're doing something else or because you're going for help because you don't know or you're going to check on a product, okay, um, always get back to them and let them know that you haven't forgotten about them, that you're still there, okay, that you're still working on it. Uh, always find a better alternative of how you can make the process easier and always go back again to customers. This gives a feeling that you really care about them and you haven't forgotten okay you never want a customer to feel left out or you I mean you don't want a customer to live without being helped uh, it's always important to um, make customers feel okay uh, like you don't want to say no before you even know if you can say no so make sure that whenever you say no, it's because you are 100% sure about it. So always try to say that if you're not sure that you'll be working on it, that you're working on it, that you'll find out, okay? But never say no before because if they hear no for an answer, then that's not what they're actually expecting for you, from you. Always try to use the right language with customers, okay? Remember to use uh, favor rather than command language. Never make a person feel like you're telling them what to do, but instead asking or suggesting them what to do. You should never mention, for example, give me your username or spell the last name. Okay, hold please, sit there. Instead, you can use, um, could I have your name please? Or will you spell the last name for me? Will you have a seat over there please? Or let me look into the system so to see what I can find and so I could help you. So try to always change, okay? Remember that words are very important. Sometimes it's about the words that you use. You wanna make sure that you're really using um, the right words that they, uh, that they feel like you really care about them. You're not actually mad for helping them. 
now we're gonna uh, have a visual okay and visually appreciate some of the most important and most effective communication skills which include questions eye contact and visible mouth okay you want them to listen to you you want them to uh, to to listen to hear what you're saying and actually to understand and if you may feel like they're not understanding what you're saying or what you're talking about because you may see the reaction on their faces please go back and and, and double check with them make sure that they are understanding also um, body language silence be open to continue encouragement okay another skill will be understanding uh, checking what has been said you know always go back to make sure that that's really really what they want and what they're looking for and then summarizing and reflect a smile on your face okay you always want to look happy remember that um, and and this may uh, affect the your communication with them which is very essential for a great customer service this includes language also if there's any background noise uh, people screaming try to go away from that because then the the customers may feel overwhelmed also distraction uh, put downs lack of interest disability discomfort with topic distance too many questions and other people and time you know that they are there now let's talk a little bit more about how uh, to have uh, some listening skills okay so always try to listen to customers always listen to them and pay close attention to what they have to say and to what they're looking for they always have a point and you want to make them feel like they are being heard okay always make them a priority and attend to immediate needs which means that if you need to finish something else before giving your full attention do it it is important okay if not then you make the customer a priority and then you go back to it later be available and reliable for them maintain a good eye contact an attentive posture and concentration it is actually uh, unbelievable that uh, people are so visual and they can see uh, how if you're listening or not from just looking at you you may be acting like you're listening but your face that's not reflecting so or maybe your body language your body may be uh, not reflecting that you're actually uh, really listening to them and you want to make sure that you are it's really important that that, that you do because that's uh, what they're expecting from you now um, um, possess, uh, possessing and in improving your um, following skills uh, is always good to be aware of of course the main goal is for customers to walk out happy and satisfied but you also want for them to be back as they trust you and will be willing to ask for you when they go to your company once again this will sure open the door for future communication and service which is why you should invite them to know more about the company and the products just in case they will need them okay they will need you uh, in the future ask questions and be willing to listen to theirs encourage them and create um, an empathetic silence which leaves them with a great and good future idea okay maybe they may have something in mind you don't know that and maybe if you start promoting some other product if they may need it you know uh, you may promote it a little bit don't be so on top of them because you don't want them to feel like you're overwhelming them uh, or that you're trying to sell them uh, too much you know uh, so always try to 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 um, to just go ahead and tell them you know I have this product um, that just came in maybe you want to take a look at it or maybe in the future don't forget you know and I'm here uh, next time that you come you know just ask for me and just remember to actually uh, mention your name one more time okay so that's uh, another way to have great following skills you want to follow up with them uh, now when questioning you have to be careful not to annoy customers know them and see who uh, will be willing to listen to you and answer there are four types of question skills which are open questions closed questions paraphrasing and check for understanding uh, and this means that when you start questioning you know customers you know uh, you're willing to listen to them you know and try to make it seem that it's time for you to answer 
and it's time for you to ask, you know, uh, you want to ask them questions because you want to make sure of what they really want. Also paraphrasing, it's good to paraphrase, okay, and check for understanding. If you may feel like they don't understand or they may be a little bit lost, just go back. Or maybe they're not lost and they don't reflect it. You still want to go back and, and, and make sure that they're understanding. So just go ahead and, and say, uh, are you understanding what I'm saying? Is Do you have any question? Is there something else I can, um, you know, go for that may give you a better a better image of what I'm explaining to you? Or maybe you want to try the product, you know, or maybe present it, present it to them, depending on the product. Uh, you're actually selling. Now re let's talk a little bit about reflective skills uh, which are expected in providing customers with a great customer service. You don't want the conversation to end there. You want the customers to know about uh, your company, uh, how uh, you guys are willing to make business with them again in the future. It keeps a door open okay, for future communication. It, it is important for you to know how to use the follow. Okay, uh, for example, paraphrasing, which we already spoke about it, reflecting facts, reflecting feelings, reflecting silence, summarizing, choosing your words, and useful phrases. Okay, always try to use the, the, the right phrases. So we go back to what we were talking about before of how it is important to actually pay close attention to the words that you use. Um, I would like for you all to think about how uh, you use your voice in different situations. Therefore, I would also like for you to ask um, these questions to the person right next to you right now. For example, you could ask, Jake, your coffee is cold. Francis, I need your assistance. Or we can see that not all of us, okay, um, have the same tone of voice. So again, we go back to what we were saying that it's sometimes it's not what you're saying, but how you say things. So your tone of voice is very important. It, like the difference is, uh, Francis, I need your assistance, you know. Or maybe if we add please, you know, it sounds way better. Fla Francis, I need your assistance, please. Or if you say, Francis, I need your assistance, you know, it's it gives a picture, you know, that it doesn't matter what we're saying. It's we're saying the same thing, but since we're using a different tone of voice, we make it uh, sound different. Um, also, okay, it is essential that you pay close attention to your tone of voice when you refer to a customer or even internal employees. Uh, and again, it's about teamwork again, okay? We should be very uh, cautious when you're loud, when you feel like you're angry or upset. I speak faster when nervous, I speak slowly when, when tired uh, or bored. Always try to have a cheerful voice, always try to use a tone of voice that is warm and understanding always find it easy okay find it easy to talk to people to other individuals that you don't know control your tone you tone in most situations you don't want to sound bossy or weak or in insecure or unsure um, always save a clear and easy to hear voice and speak in a very formal or very trendy manner think about how you may uh, you might uh, modify your voice in certain situations so like we did with a mirror you know which we're using, we're using visual. So you're gonna stand in front of the mirror and you're gonna see how you react and your body languages. In this case, you're gonna record yourself, okay? You're gonna go ahead and record yourself and see how you sound every time you greet a customer or maybe you're actually helping them. Uh, this will help you realize and notice if you're actually using the right tone of voice. Um, to body language, okay? Body language uh, should always be important as well especially because people are very visual and they can perceive your attention wrongly. Uh, good body language examples could be to smile, to introduce yourself, and always wear a name badge, okay? Always your name, if the company allows it. Shake hand in, if appropriate. When I say appropriate, it's that you, sometimes you may realize that there are people that they don't like to be, um, you know, um, shake-handed. Um, also learn uh, forward and try to be aware of cultural differences. There are certain things we may be able to do with certain people that we cannot do with others. It is important to know who is who and who will mind certain behaviors or not. Remember that we're dealing with a very diverse population, especially in this country, especially where we live. So it is important to know, you know, 
uh, who will be offended. For example, when it comes to Hispanics, it's okay uh, for us to give them a kiss. Actually, they get offended when they don't, when we don't give them a kiss or a hug. Or maybe when we're dealing with an older generation or a younger generation, or maybe when we're dealing with um, Europeans, you know, when we're dealing with Asians, you know, they're or maybe from Middle East. We want to make sure that we make people feel comfortable depending uh, where they're coming from. So it's good that you go ahead and, and research about the different cultures, about who likes what, okay? Uh, if they're women, uh, if they're women, if they're men. So that interferes a lot with um, our body language as well and the things we should do and not uh, and should not do depending on on, on people. Now, telephone skills, okay, when dealing with customers or any individuals over the phone, always try to know how to use the phone um, and personalize it, okay? Don't make it look hard when you're never you're talking to a customer. Personalize yourself with technology so advanced that it allows us to actually edit, um, to make, you know, the phone process and the communication process over the phone um, easier than what it really is. Um, we want you to be comfortable. So you show that you really know your job and don't make people feel like you don't know what you're doing. Always try to speak clearly and slowly. Always smile. Remember that actually people can hear when you smile on the other side. Introduce yourself. Introduce your name and organization that you're working for. Maybe the department. Be more specific. You, you don't want them to get irritated by not knowing who's calling. Uh, sadly, uh, people um, get calls from all around the world from different companies and they may feel annoyed sometimes. Always write down the caller's name and use it, okay? You never know. You want to make sure that if you get a complaint in the future, you always have that reference there that you spoke to the person. Try to avoid rude things while the person is on hold. Sometimes you may think that they're not listening to you, but you don't know that. Therefore, if they're explaining something, then use words to show you're listening. For example, I understand, or maybe I agree, okay? Or, of course, uh, I completely agree, okay? Maybe I, I, I know what you're going through, or... Or yes, yes, okay? So you want to make them feel that you're there, that you're, you're not ignoring them. Because whenever you keep yourself quiet for so long, they may go back to you, you know, for an update. Like, are you there? Are you following me? Because they may think that you're actually not listening, even if you are. We ha always have a notepad and pencil ready, pencil ready to take notes or messages. So you don't forget uh, in the future whatever you spoke to that client. It is also rude to eat or drink while on the phone. People can still hear it, okay? They can still hear when you're actually smashing. And it gives the impression that you're ignoring them. Okay, when you need to write, email, or text a customer, always remember the importance of good writing skills. Again, we're going back to, to technology. Nowadays, a lot of uh, customers are rather email or text or like to be emailed okay and sometimes you don't know who is who and who is on the other line and how much writing is important for them always remember to write clearly um, clearly and consist um, con um, and concise okay refer to their letter date and inquiry be friendly without being too informal okay so always do the the dear aunt writing style Check your spelling and grammar. Make sure you have answered their, um, their questions or requests or explained uh, why uh, can't you help them or why, uh, you know, what are the different reasons why you cannot help them, okay? They, wanna, they always want to feedback. Be timely or apologize for any delay or replying, okay? You want to, again, go back to them and make sure that you're, uh, you're there with them. Now let's talk um, and remember once again that you always want customers or clients to be back to your company and especially to you, okay? So you want to guarantee that they return. Uh, always let them know that you will be more than happy to do business with them again in the future and you really appreciate it. Always leave a positive uh, impression and smile. Check customers have everything they need and they're looking for. If you have said to follow up, do so, okay? Uh, tell them something that you may be uh, that may be useful for them in the future. For example, a new service that you guys are releasing, or maybe something that it may go with whatever they're buying. Invite them back. Okay, tell them to come back. That you'll be there for them. 
or we say goodbye, that you're looking forward to see them uh, in your future and to do, to never hesitate to contact you or the company whenever you get it. Uh, so now let's talk uh, about first impressions which are essential and they do make a difference, especially uh, in the business industry. Customers usually make judgments in the first 30 seconds, okay, that's a fact. You only have one chance to make a first great and best impression. Make it count, okay? Don't think that, okay, maybe I'm in a bad mood today, you know, that first impression that you're showing, even if you get better after, that's uh, the impression that they're going to take with them, okay? So you don't want um, to make them feel that like you've been bitter. You don't want to help them, okay? Or you're actually uh, in a bad mood. You don't want them to, to see that. Uh, it is also good to know that you should always put your feet uh, in customer's shoes, okay, and try to see your organization through the eyes of a customer. So that's we're going to talk a little bit about organizational assessment activity. So always ask yourself, what are the first things you notice? What has the organization done to make you feel welcomed? Uh, does anything make you feel uncomfortable? How could you feel more at ease? Uh, from small groups and then uh, discuss different methods used to help people feel welcome. One person from each group uh, to present back, okay? Um, it's it's good to know that sometimes companies, they don't know if they're doing something wrong. You are the ones, you know, working there and you know what's wrong and what's right. And you, don't, you are the ones who uh, know how clients or customers feel. And so you always want to make the, uh, you want to give a feedback uh, to your customers, okay? You want to give a feedback to them and so they know, okay? So they know uh, if there is something that they can change or they can fix, you know? Because, of course, you want to guarantee that clients come back and you want to guarantee that clients are happy uh, with your, your service and they're satisfied. Uh, now, the way you present and introduce yourself, it's always essential. And this is where we go to a great uh, introduction, again, okay, and first impression. Companies are expected to have a policy for uh, presentation and dress code, which focuses on uniforms, badges, um, personal hygiene, clothing appropriate uh, to the situation, hair cleanliness and style. Also accessories like jewelry, uh, earrings, watches, tattoos should look professional, okay or sometimes hitting depending on the population you're dealing with, facial expressions, tone of voice, body language and surroundings, organization cleanliness. If you see that uh, the company is actually dirty or um, your location needs to be cleaned, always go ahead and report it, okay? Don't stay quiet. you rather go ahead and complain about that than having a customer complain about it, okay? Like, Customers they like cleanliness and they like to uh, to see things spotlight. Now um, let's talk a little bit about um, positive first impression. Okay, when reflecting the best first impression, always try to be confident, knowledgeable, and know your company and the services you provide. Be limited to express certain details about the company unless they ask. Okay. Too much information is bad, as much as little information. So you wanna, you always wanna keep a balance. So that's why it's always good to know your company's policies. It is always important to follow up. Don't just say you'll do something. You actually do it. Okay. Try to always uh, strengthen um, the customer's commitment to your organization. You wanna guarantee for them to enjoy uh, doing business with you. You wanna make sure that they actually. Um, are ga gaining, they're winning, okay, that they're actually taking the best product or the best service possible uh, to their houses. Also, um, there are certain actions you should always try to avoid in order to limit customers' dissatisfaction and complaints. Um, this means that sometimes, you know, uh, you say no, okay, and we spoke about this before, saying no before you actually know that it's going to be a no, and that's going to be an issue because Customer will the customer will get mad since the beginning if you say no without knowing, especially if you come back to them and you say yes after you have said no. So always make sure that you know a hundred percent, hundred and fifty percent, and you're sure that it's actually a no, uh, and not a yes. Okay, so don't say uh, you don't know without even being sure. 
uh, saying um, you don't know where a co-worker is, a co-worker is, and if they're not around, offer them your help. You're there to assist because somebody's looking for another person, and the person is not there. Don't don't actually uh, wait for the person to leave without being helped. You're actually there to help them, even if they're not looking for you. Say you can help the customer um, because you're out to lunch or in break. If that's the case, always look for somebody else who can help them, but don't leave them without being assisted. Leaving people on hold for too long, you know, without getting back to them uh, to update them and letting them know that you haven't forgotten about them, that you're still working on it, uh, try to avoid it. Never ignore people just because you're too busy to assist them. Uh, also, don't treat people unequally or select them because you uh, like some other uh, people more than others. Um, every customer is different and they're all very important, okay? And they play a very important role in your company. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about some factors with affect quality of service in any corporation. For example, the organization. Okay, um, organizations sometimes they don't know, you know, um, if they're doing something wrong. That's why you get it's good that you get feedback for customers and you let the company know. Respons uh, responsiveness. You want to sound responsible. That you're responsible for what you do. You're organized. Okay, uh, efficiency. You're there to be efficient. You're there. To help uh, and be reliable, confidence. You it doesn't matter if you don't know. You always show confidence. You always show that you know your product, you know your job, that you know what you're doing. And if you don't know, okay, make sure that you look for the right person. Um, consistency and real uh, reliability. Okay, always be consistent. Okay, never give up. Don't think that because you cannot do much more for that customer that that has been enough. No, just look for more. Um, acceptance of all policies and, and procedures. You should accept all uh, policies. You know you should reflect that you're happy working for that company and that you uh, you're actually um, happy with the policies. Okay, and you understand them. That's actually um, actually very essential when it comes. Now we're going to talk a little bit uh, more about how it is always a great idea to plan in advance how. Uh, you will be able to provide customers with the best possible customer service. So always have a process, okay, for dealing with difficult situations um, before they occur. Observe and report customer needs to your leaders if, uh, if needed. Reporting procedures like meeting organizational funding uh, requirements, okay. Also market your organization and then recording procedures. Uh, when, For example, when you're busy at times. So always plan customer service that's always uh, recommended okay uh, always be proactive in improving services it's never enough you don't know everything there's always a lot uh, to learn now we're gonna go um, to what we have promised since the beginning and I really um, like um, this chart uh, and it's called the four P's uh, which basically there are four essential uh, essentials that every employee must have when doing customer service the first one will be principal and it's first P which encourages individuals to represent their company with honesty and um, and abide um, the rules. The second one will be price, which means that you should always show respect to yourself, to the company, and customers. Politeness is the third one, which will be uh, about um, refer, and which will refer to when employees need to be thoughtful, courteous, and kind. The last one will be professionalism. Uh, which is the the fourth P word, which involves when employees do their best, use their best, and present their best. Okay, so these are uh, four keywords that should be uh, considered at all times. Now, as employees, there will be un uncountable situations in which you will be, you will have to face with very difficult situations, and you will need to be prepared for those. It is important to always make customers your priority. It is not about you; it is about them. And uh, they should see it. Take responsibility for what you can do and what you can't. Then show uh, who to assign it to. Discuss alternatives uh, with your leaders or any other co-worker who can support you. Agree on action and never show customers that you're having a hard time making a decision. Listen to what customers want and need. Don't take it personally. It will only upset you and that will be reflected. Find out what customers want. Again. This is the reason why, why you're there, to listen and assist them. Label their behavior, not the customer. 
don't get defensive it will only cause a disagreement and a distraction from both sides okay now uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, customers with special needs it is also good to know to be open to uh, the fact that not all, not all customers are the same no all will find uh, yourself you and you will find yourself in different situations in which some um, of them may have special needs you should always remember that all customers are important and they need to feel it customers with special needs are considered those who are um, who doesn't have a companion and they're minor people with limited mobility people with disabilities like for example mental and physical people from other areas or people who may not be familiar with the way things are done there where you work uh, so they're culturally different uh, and also people whom English is not their first language so you always want to try to understand them okay because they don't speak your language doesn't mean that you cannot help them now let's talk a little bit um, okay about the different types of customers we're gonna start with the verbal customer you will have to know how to recognize the different types of customers okay we can help you deal with them differently and personalize your assistance and satisfy their needs always smile and be pleasant with okay verbal customers but don't encourage them ask close questions wind up thank them for coming walk into the door but don't be rude or dismissive provide minimal response limit the time available uh, for them to interrupt don't have um, long pauses okay because they tend to talk too much so you want to make them feel that you care but you don't have enough time because you have other people waiting as well now let's talk about the angry customer which is one of the most difficult ones to deal with so you should always try to follow these recommendations to avoid a complaint or dissatisfaction so don't take it personally be defensive or blame order others seek support if you are scared if you can agree on a situation or if the customers ask to see whoever is in charge um, also stay calm and remain uh, polite emphasize in broad way okay listen carefully without interrupting so you understand the problem and the issue don't um, escalate the problem don't make it bigger than what it really is try to help and make things clear and don't let them live angry okay propose an action plan and follow it how you can assist them and make them happy now we have the know-it-all customer those customers who project that they know it all usually don't like to listen and if they do they will never agree with you so it is important to always uh, to never try to be smart or to project they're smarter than them or to show off what you know it is hard to win in this case be dangerous uh, be generous I'm sorry and show admiration for them for knowing so much compliment them uh, on their research and knowledge ask them questions and use them to improve uh, your knowledge don't make them uh, see that you're trying to change their minds but to add some knowledge to theirs and knowledge what they say and agree on it and don't put them in their place no matter how tempting it is okay because they will get patience okay they usually lose their patience and that's where the issue starts with these customers okay so with them you should always try uh, to put everything in writing okay because they may go back and change their mind assume control uh, gently and point out the best course of action from what they have told you they need also confirm a plan of action with them be clear and make sure they understood always reflect back to them what they have said uh, ask them for the options you know be logical and find out what they really want you know and again go back to make sure that that's actually what they really want because you don't want to change your mind and then blame everything on you then we're gonna talk about the suspicious customer or those individuals who are suspicious uh, are a mission to deal with and satisfy those customers usually don't believe the person on selling a product or providing a service always make sure you establish your credibility be polite be careful with what you say they will try to catch you out so don't guess or tell them something you're not sure about um, ensure you know your product or service also don't take it personal they do that to every single person they deal with uh, they don't trust people okay uh, now let's talk a little bit about that if you ever feel like you need to be trained or you're not feel comfortable working with people then you should ask your supervisor or corporation you work for to train you properly don't be afraid if you feel like you need to be trained do it we'd rather have you trained than having a complaint from a customer customer service skills are expected to be developed since they are not formed when companies hire new employees they should always look into their previ previous experience 
It is said that training is expected to be conducted to make sure that each associate is on the same page. Remember that it only takes one mistake to lose a client or discourage them. Okay, so you want them back. Remember, that, and it's very important. Um, customer relations service trainings are usually provided by corporations to guarantee their associates uh, that associates possess the best customer service skills possible. Those trainings make clear how good service keeps customers coming back. So like this training, if you feel like you need more, always come back, okay? Because there is much more we can actually uh, train you on. Uh, organizations, again, should always uh, continuously monitor customers' perceptions of their service. Therefore, job skills uh, of customer service employees most likely need to be enhanced uh, through training. Now, uh, it can be con uh, we can conclude, okay, that good customer service is essential in every sector, uh, and it is undeniable uh, that it should does make a difference in any industry. Make every individual you work with, uh, for and with feel important and priority. Think like the person you are working with and make them feel it. Um, be the best listener and follow up and follow through as many times as needed and as possible. It is important to turn no into yes. Um, as you get creative and go the extra mile for them. Remember to ask them how to, uh, since you're dealing with so many different individuals, you want to make sure you specifically uh, make the person feel valued and you know the, the type of customer you're dealing with. So what we have covered today, okay, we cover how to communicate effectively uh, with customers, how to create a positive impression, also how to develop and maintain customer service standards, how to uh, we have learned different types of customers, how to plan good customer service, importance of first impression, and how to deal with difficult uh, individuals and situations. Also, remember that all individuals working toward a common goal of providing uh, it's the best customer service. Okay, meet the goals of your administration. Happy, um, try to keep the current um, customers happy, and the new ones happy as well. Uh, and the office satisfied and those who work with you satisfy as well employees when employees are happy okay if that's a result customers are happier your performance excels and company grows so that's what you want that's your main goal so now we're gonna we're gonna talk we have some questions okay we have 15 questions uh, through or false um, so we're gonna answer them and then we'll go through all the questions at the end uh, so basically, these are the questions, and then at the end, we're going to answer them together. If you get any questions wrong, we can go over them because we want to make sure that today when you leave uh, this training, you feel like you're well trained and, and that you have learned, okay, how to treat people people differently. And especially that you understand that um, customer service skills, they can be developed. Don't think that because you are not a, a, person's, a people's person, you cannot develop the customer service skills. But the most important is that you um you know how it feels when people provide you with a bad customer service okay you gotta you gotta you gotta feel it okay how would you feel so the same way um you are making people feel so you always want to be welcome you want to be created you want to be treated like you are a priority at the moment because you're actually paying for the service so, so that's why uh that's how you want people to feel whenever you work with them okay so um these are um, actually, we have eight questions on this line at uh, Joel Falls. Uh, you can answer them. And then we actually have uh, 15 more questions. Um, we, I mean, I'm sorry, um, seven more questions. We make a total of 15 questions uh, and then answer them on, on, on your notepad. And then at the end, we have some answer, the answers here. Okay. And here I have the reference.